Um, welcome to America's Top Rebithons. May this class be for Rafua Shalema, for Eliezer Raphael Le Benemuna, and also for Arye David Ben Shira. Please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to us on the America's Top Rebithons YouTube page, or click follow to follow us on your podcasting app so that you are the first to know when an inspiring new episode is posted. I'm very happy to have on today's show, Rebithon Gail Mihalowitz. Gail is a Rebbitton at the Westmount Shul and Learning Center in the Thornhill Jewish community of Toronto, Canada. She has a BA in Individual and Social Behavior from Notre Dame College in Cleveland. After 11 years in preschool and elementary school education, Gail began her important work in the Jewish outreach, where she continues to inspire and educate people of all ages through classes and programs. In addition to being a Rebbitson, Gail is also a personal trainer, which I personally find to be very, very cool. She helps women set exercise goals and succeed in reaching them. She also advises women on other life goals so that women can really reach a place of happiness, balance, and self-esteem and family success. Wow. A Rebbitson who's also a personal trainer. This is really, really cool. Please tell us more about yourself and what you do. Um, okay, so I think you really mentioned quite a bit of what I do. I do a lot of different Torah classes, and I sometimes like to combine my Torah teaching with exercise. So for instance, in Toronto, they've got this beautiful organization called Beaker Holim, and they have these classes for women who are, uh, you know, at an older age. And they're called like the Golden Girls or the Sunshine Club. So I love going there and teaching Torah, like I actually give them a Devar Torah. Um, and then after that, I go, okay, fun time. <laughs> and then we start doing exercise and movement. So that is definitely, you know, something that I do in terms of my Torah and exercise. And then on top of that, I work as a personal trainer. So I have clients from all walks of life. Um, I've had clients who are non-Jews. I've had clients who are secular Jews and clients who are like, you know, amazing kolel wives and amazing um, people from everywhere. Um, what I appreciate about doing this is that you have this phenomenal opportunity to actually give to people. And when you give to people, you learn to love people and they learn to appreciate you. So there's a lot of not only this bonding through the exercise, but I really, I call my um, business learn and burn because that's what I feel like we do. We learn from each other. We learn like uh, understandings of life when it's 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 interesting like I find myself sharing a lot of wisdom it's just who I am like thank Hashem that I've been exposed to teaching and Torah and all these wonderful things I'm so incredibly grateful that I end up you know sharing it so I've had like uh, I've had someone who is very secular who came to me with her friend her friend is very close to me and uh she told her friend, whatever, if this Rebbitzin says one, like, thank God, Baruch Hashem thing, you can't forget it. I'm walking out. You tell her that up front. But I am who I am. Do you know what I mean? So it just like keeps slipping out and it ends up and you get close to these people. And they talk about your challenges and you try to give them a Torah perspective. And a couple of years later, the same girl kept saying, Baruch Hashem! <laughs> funny so I love it incredible and then like it's funny like I've always tried to make Shadokim for so many years like you know like I think every one of us out there like we just have our heart there and you know this one who knows that one and you're trying you're trying never worked and when I started this business I made two Shadokim just like from my basement from my clients like someone going you know I have a brother and blah, and I go I know someone you know like it's just been such a gift and and also, once you get Jewish women talking, I love this. It's like everybody is looking to help the other one. Like, it's like sure. 100, like, do you have a carpenter? Do you have a this? Can you help me with a cleaning lady? Oh, I know a psychologist. Oh, I, you know what I mean? Like, it's just so uh, beautiful. So it's really added on um, a, a huge dimension to my life. And I, I really never started as a personal trainer until I was 50. Okay. Which wow. is a very interesting time. Like I always love to exercise. I've always been athletic. And my daughter um, says to me once, like, you know, we're, we want to, I really want to become a certified fitness trainer. I said, you do. That's so cute. And she goes, yeah, we're putting this little group together and we're short a person. 
Like it was a through can fit pro and, you know, we're short a person. And if you don't, if we don't have enough people, they're not going to do it for us because they were trying to get a, a woman's only course going. Okay. So she said, would you do it? I said, yeah, why not? Like, you know, it could be fun. So I joined that little course. Of course, none of them became a fitness trainer. <laughs> I was the only one who ended up really taking it on and becoming this fitness trainer. So it's just been really, I'm, I'm again, just grateful to Hashem. It's been an incredible journey. It's been an incredible journey, journey for me, I think, like physically, spiritually, emotionally. And it, it really does like help your overall well-being. Like, you know, so I don't know if there's anything else you want to ask, but I filled you in with that much. So tell me if you need to know more. Thank you. Thank you. That's so beautiful. And we're actually going to get into it right now. Exactly what you said, because I know that you give classes on exercise and Torah, as you're mentioning. And I think it's so appropriate that you combine body and soul, because that's what we human beings are. We're a soul inside of a body. So can you please share with us some parallels between exercise and Torah? Okay. See, I want to give you a... Uh a real idea here. So thank you for even giving me this opportunity. So if we look in the Tanya, it tells us that the soul is compared to the rider and the physical body is compared to the horse. Okay. So, and that's what we're using to move in our lives, right? Like what does a horse do? It takes you on your journey. Okay. A horse takes you where you have to go. And so what we're looking at is, and it's a funny story. I'm just going to tell you a funny story that during COVID, I ended up with my husband. Um, you know, my kids were really concerned for us when COVID really hit. Okay. And, you know, they're like, you're older. You can't be in the, 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 the city. We got to get you out. And my son is a partner at a farm. Okay. So my husband and I moved to a farm that is a, um, a farm that, that it's like where you leave your horse. Okay, <laughs> I know it sounds fun. It's like a horse, uh, I don't know, a horse vacation center. No, it's like really a place where you leave your horse and, you know, cause they're hard to keep in your backyard, right? So you keep your horse on this farm. And I ended up wanting to learn how to take care of the horses. Like I was there for so long, I figured I'm joining in on this process. So I really learned this idea of, you know, the concept of where the rider, you have to be in control of that horse but you need a very healthy horse to be able to get around, all right? So we have to appreciate that Hashem has said to us, we as human beings, that we have a journey in life, right? And in order to facilitate that journey in life, the soul was put into the body, right? And so therefore, like, if you do not have a healthy body, you're very limited in what you can accomplish in this world, right? You want to be able to eat and walk and move and do mitzvahs and, you know, flex your, I always say you have to flex your neshama muscles. You got to flex those neshama muscles, but the way they're flexed is housed into this body, right? Called the horse, but the horse has to be harnessed because that horse is wild. And if that horse wants, it will lead you. If you do not take control of it, it will lead you. So uh, one time my son and me and a bunch of the, in our family, we went horseback riding. I don't know if anybody's ever done this. It's like a lot of fun. So how does the horseback riding work? Whatever that very first horse does sort of sets the pace for all the horses behind it. So he's riding on his horse and every minute it's stopping to eat. Like it would not stop. Every We, we called him the diner, okay? Every minute he's like got his head down and he's, and my poor son, I was going, ah, ah, I was trying to lift up his head. And finally, the person who's the guide turned to my son and he said, listen, you need to control your horse because your horse is just a dumb horse. And if you don't lift its head up, it will do nothing but stand here and eat the whole day. Okay, so this is something that we have to realize we have this beautiful body, but if we do not take care of it, and we let it have its way, it will do nothing but vegetate on a couch a whole day, eat 50,000 bags of chips and sleep. That's really what the horse wants to do. So part of your free will choice is harnessing the horse so the soul can do what it needs to do. So for us, it's really, I wanna tell you something interesting. When you make that decision to exercise, it's coming from the soul. That's not coming from the body. 
The body doesn't want to exercise. The soul understands that this horsey, right? You, if you keep the horse, like when I was on the farm, if you would keep a horse in a barn all day long, that horse would die in the end, okay? The horse was created to move just like we are created. We're called a holech. We're called something that moves. Only a malach stands still. It doesn't have like its two feet to keep going. It's the only one that stands still. So it has no free will choice. There's no journey in a malach's life. A malach is a spiritual force assigned a certain job. Go down and do it and poof. Okay, it's done. But there's no struggle, but we are meant to struggle. And the struggle is between the body and the soul. And you need a healthy body, right, to house the soul, to be harnessed, to do the next right thing, right? So the body doesn't want to do anything. It just wants to lay down. So when you pick it up and you harness it, right, the neshama harness, it says, you know what, body, I really need you. I need you and I want you to feel healthy. I want you to feel good. I want to, um, you know, take care of my health. There's so many health benefits. I, I don't want to see you lose your muscle mass. I don't want you to have brittle bones. I don't want you to suffer from heart disease or diabetes or cancer. I want to help you body. I want to help you to do the next right thing. I want you to feel good. I want to help your mental health. I want to, to increase your, um, uh, your uh, serotonin, right? But I want to decrease if you have too many, um, like, you know, the things that make you anxious. Sorry that the word is just slipping me. But, you know, like these excess adrenaline. I want to burn out that excess adrenaline for you. So come along for the ride with me. Now, when does it get dangerous? It gets dangerous when it starts to feel so good for the body, right? And it's like, whoa, look at me, look who I am now. And now you can't pass by a mirror without looking at the body and you're all obsessed with, oh my gosh, this little extra schmaltz over here, what happened, right? And when you're like, oh, I hate young Tiff, it just gets in the way of my exercise routine. Or you know what, now I have to, I want to eat too much. Like when you're finding that's happening, now you've lost control and the horse has taken over. So we live in an environment where we have to be really careful, right? Because the world is body obsessed, right? For sure. So, there's no doubt about it. And it has seeped into the firm world in a very uncomfortable and dangerous way. You know, like where people, you know, shit off purposes, everybody's got to show a picture and everybody's got to be this and everybody's got to be that. And then you got to check out the mother and see what size she is because you got to know that after she has kids, this girl's going to look like that mom and blah, blah, blah. And it's really unfortunate. And that's when the body, the horse went wild. So really like, do you see where we're always looking for balance? We're always looking for you know, that golden mean, which we'll talk about when, you know, because when you start to look at like what the rumbum has to say about all this, you can see, right? So even in the language, like even in the language of exercise, when you're using it appropriately, it works so well for the kind of character you want to have. You want to be a balanced character. Balance is so important. As you age, your balance gets worse. And actually, I was just looking today, I was looking, I did a course on um, brain fitness. It was really, really interesting. They sent out a little thing today. They said, test your brain health. So how do you test your brain health? You stand on one foot. Okay, so one foot, you're standing on one foot. You're okay. looking ahead for 20 seconds. I know this sounds funny for 20 seconds. And if you can do it with your arms out, all the better. And if you can hold that balance, then they say your brain is in better shape. Wow. If you find yourself tilting and this thing, that, you have to check that out. And then if you want to get more balanced, you stand on one leg with your eyes closed, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just like a very interesting reality. So balance, like for the body, balance for the brain, balance even in your firm kite. Extremes that Rambam tells you is never healthy. You're always looking for this golden mean. And then you're also looking for flexibility, right? As right. you get older, you don't want to be stiff and, and shrinking. You want to be 
flexible, able to stretch, right? This is the journey of life. So, you know, you did your mitzvahs this way, you did your tefillah this way, but you don't want to be davening the same way you davened when you were in grade three. So maybe you got to like review now. Let's look at what the words mean. Every year you read the Parsha, look and say, wow, I'm at a different point in life. Now it resonates very differently. Now I get what those words mean. So you have to have like that flexibility, that, you know, ability to want to grow, right? And to want to move forward. And then this uh, concept of a very strong core. So the core is like, it goes all the way around. It's like the girdle of the body. And it keeps you like it keeps your mobility, your ability to stand for something, to stand up. Today, you are looking at the erosion of core values, right? In the Judo Christian world that you live in today, all core values are being eaten. And, and what are you finding? A topsy turvy world. When there is no strength in the core, then that's when everything starts to shake and move so here's the beauty of it like here you're working you know what i mean so these are beautiful concepts you can think within yourself like when we're talking like you know some of my groups instead of calling them learn and burn i call them schmooze and lose okay <laughs> we, <laughs> we do a lot of like schmoozy losey stuff okay so when we're talking right like you know you start to think like we'll, we can ask ourselves like these questions like you know like that we'll have a little discussion we'll say you know your core values your core this your core that right so there's also a concept in in, in um fitness that's very important called agility and that's the ability to move from side to side because sometimes Hashem sends you a challenge you can't just stay where you were and now you have to move from side to side we're not used to it we only were like our bodies the way we're living today which is really like a threat to our body's health the way we're living today, like where it's almost zero movement, right? Right. So you're not used to doing this. You're not used to going from side to side. And sometimes Hashem does that. He he makes you have to move in a different direction. Away. Like, what? I was only going this way. What are you doing to me, Hashem? Right. And now you're suddenly moving, right? In a totally different direction. So you need that agility, right? So you need core strength, you need balance, you need agility, you need the ability to stretch, right? And now to me, one of the greatest muscles that hit me was this concept of a personal trainer okay so a personal trainer is like Hashem each and every one of us was gifted a personal trainer Hashem and he sets up your obstacle course you know just like your trainer sets up okay so I want to work this part of the body I want to work that part of the body I want to do this so you're going to work this machine you're going to work that machine you're going to, okay so now you know you start to learn you're getting better you're pumping up you're doing great and then they pull this stick on you they go you know what we have to challenge the body even more right we want to see growth we want to see change so now we're going to challenge you even more and so then Hashem takes a heavier weight and you're like, what? Me? I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And if you ever see, sometimes you go into the club, you'll see that the personal trainer, like the person's laying down, they holding the weight. They don't see that the personal trainer has put like their pinky there or a couple fingers to help them get used to this first. And that's Hashem. He doesn't just dump this big weight on you. You pick up this weight and he's still holding on the edge, right? And he's helping you get used to it. And then slowly but surely, right? You can start to, he's always going to be there watching. Every personal trainer has to watch. Let Chas Vashon, you don't drop it. So Hashem's always going to be watching you there. Don't ever think you're doing anything on your own, okay? <laughs> that would be a very false joke, all right? But here, see what's going on? It's just a, so like, to me, a lot of this stuff like really like resonated, right? And I, I and ended up using a lot of it in my, you know, talks because I really could see the parallels, you know, and then I actually like, I give a really nice talk. I haven't given it in many years. I looked it up now and I was like, wow, I said that for Hashem. Okay, <laughs> I can't believe it. But you know, there's just so many beautiful things that you could add into this reality. So. There's so much, it's, you know, you, you, 
you don't think of it right away. It doesn't seem so obvious, but the more you talk about it, the parallels between exercise and Torah, and I love, love, love what you just said about personal training. Like when you go to a gym and you have like a personal trainer when you want to work out and they're there, they're watching you, they're helping you, they're helping you decide which weights to put on, they're helping you decide which exercises to, to do. And then once you master those, then they up the game. Yes. The weights, more intensive exercise. The right. same thing with Hashem. Hashem starts off with the small challenges. You're not born with like, you know, in the midst of a crisis. You're just, you know, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit at a time. And then he tests you harder. Right. Just with more because you already build up the basics. You already have right. the foundation. Exactly. It's it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And the same thing with, with, with core, like you said, and agility and flexibility and balance, both on the physical realm and on the spiritual realm. I love how it ties together and it makes so much sense. Yeah. Um, Thank and you. so you mentioned before the interview that um, exercise in Torah, it's not about losing weight. It's really about yeah. overall spiritual, physical, and emotional health. And so I want to see if you can please talk to us more about the importance of needing to maintain spiritual, physical, and emotional health in order for a person to be really and truly healthy throughout their whole being. Okay, so I think it's like, um, I, I just, I think there's a lot to be said about this because I think we're more obsessed with the dieting, unfortunately, like we're overly obsessed with that. And, and now you should know like the fitness industry is trying to take a step back. Like, I think they've realized like the damage that they've done to women and the fact that we're like always, you know, feeling not that good about ourselves. And, and that this is like, there's some kind of big prize if you're, you know, have lost weight and you're thin and everybody notices. And so first of all, the joke is, which we have to realize the way Hashem created the world and the way Hashem created all of us is that we're very unique. Right. And there's very unique body types. You know, so sometimes I'll be training these girls and I'm like, oh my gosh, like she has eight kids and you think she's still 19 and she's like this. Because you know why? She is what they call an ectomorph. It's the shape of her body. Hashem gifted this, just like he gifted, you know, blue eyes, brown eyes, this. He get gifted people with different body types, just like he gifted you with different intelligence. So it's so hard because what we're trying to do is like take all these different body types and different people and make them one. And it's just not going to happen. Like, you know, Shem gave me five foot two inches. That's the way it's going to be. You know, <laughs> like I can put on heels and try. And then after a while, you can't wear those anymore. <laughs> you get older and your feet are killing you. It's gone. So I'm just trying to say like, like we have to sort of accept like, who we are. If you are dangerously obese, right? There's like a real, you know, sakana to your, um, your health. Okay. Then I understand, you know, you better like, we have to think, we have to think and we have to act. But today what the, what's, what's being marketed out there, it's called weight neutral fitness. And I think like, I know this sounds funny, but like a lot of the people who I train, they'll say to me, you know, like, I'm so comfortable here because you don't wear like you know these teeny tiny teeny bopper clothes because I'm not going to wear that kind of stuff right <laughs> and, right I'm not going to wear that so they feel good about that I'm not like I'm, I'm not overly heavy I'm not overly skinny I'm just normal you know what I mean like I'm not like right and I'm and it's interesting like Age-wise, I could be 30 years older than a lot of the girls that I'm training. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Or I could be 30 years younger. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I just am who I am. Do you know what I mean? And I think that they appreciate that because I do not, I never talk about, oh, guess what? It's going to be great. You're going to lose weight. Because exercise will give you a healthy body. It will give you a tighter body. You may not, you know, you'll have muscle, which is very important because as you age, your muscle starts to diminish and you will, with muscle, you will be able to burn more calories. Yes, if you exercise, you can maybe eat a little more, okay? Like people make big boo-boo. You have to spin for one hour, like really spin. I'm not taught like, you know, spinning on those bikes, those stationary bikes. I love, that's one of my favorite things to do, but you have to spin. You gotta work hard. And guess what? You're gonna burn 400 calories. Just pick up one donut and eat it in five minutes. Done. <laughs> okay. So people, the correlation, like people make a big mistake, you know, like 
you know, they'll tell you like your abs are built in the gym, but they're defined in the kitchen. Like, in other words, like people dreaming about these crazy bodies with the six pack and the this and the that, do you know what kind of work that really takes? So yes, if you were blessed and you have this little ectomorph, you know, body and you're long and slim and you look like this like string bean and you just had 10 kids and everyone's like, wow, you don't look any different, you know, hey, Baruch Hashem. but a lot of us are you know, our um, endomorphs, which are like more round and soft and pear or apple. And we're like killing ourselves. Yes. Like, yeah. And we're mad at ourselves and we don't like ourselves and we don't like food and we don't like Shabbos and we don't like any of these things because they make us crazy. So, you know, we're going to have to learn to be more accepting. And if you don't want to pick out on Shabbos, don't make a million desserts. Don't make a million things that tempt you. That, that's another discussion for another time. But you, you, you hear what I'm saying, right? Right. And some of us are mesomorphs. You're going to be a little more muscular. You know what I mean? And you're never going to get this little, you know, shapey, curvy thing. That's just who you are. So that's part of like, we have to appreciate that. So what do we appreciate from this story I'm telling you? And how does that relate to Torah? That Hashem said, I gave you each an individual ride, an individual fingerprint, an individual iris. And now you will work with your individual gifts to make your individual contribution to this world. We're not all meant to be supermodels. That's not how we are going to contribute. And, and, and being a supermodel, I remember this so well. Okay. So when I used to be, you know, before I was a trainer, I worked at, I, I didn't work, I worked out at this all woman's gym. Okay. And they once had a special, you could have this like personal trainer. So I had this personal trainer and she just liked me. And I, I again, like I couldn't help sharing wisdom. Okay. So I'd share wisdom. She wasn't even Jewish. And she went like, Oh, can I ever come to your house? And I'm like, Oh, now I'm in trouble. Okay. But anyway, so she says to me, She's starting asking me all about her problems and giving me, you know, like the, the whole deal. And I looked at her and I said, I just want to tell you something really interesting. Everyone in this gym dreams that they could have your body. And they think that if they only had your body, they'd have no problems. Right. I'm so happy that you're talking to me because now I'm realizing that's not Exactly. It's a hundred percent. Just because you're, you have the perfect figure, the perfect size, the perfect body doesn't mean that you're problem free. It's, no. you know, we all have our own individual, as they say, pekala, our own individual bag of troubles, you know, whether you're skinny, whether you're fat, whether you're average, you, we all have our, you know, we all have our things, our challenges to deal with in life. Yep. Yep. And I love what you're saying that, you know, Hashem gave us all a, an individual body and individual gifts to make our own individual contribution to the world. And that's what it's about. And when you exercise, it's not about being skinny and losing weight and being a certain size, a, cer a certain body type. It's about just keeping your body healthy. Yes. So that your soul can function within yes. your body. Yes. So like, it's an interesting idea. They say like food is to the body. Yes. Torah's wisdom is to the soul. So yes. what does that mean? So when you eat, you know, you have to chew, you have to digest, you take what you don't like, you might have to spit out some things like you can get ideas from everywhere and everywhere, right? And anywhere. But the Torah has to be digested, it has to really become part of you. It nourishes you, keeps you vibrant and alive, right? Yes. So and like exercise is to the body. Yeah. So Hashem gave you exercise for the soul. So what's the exercise for the soul? The mitzvahs. Those are things that you have to do. You have to make a conscious effort. You have to choose between good and bad and right and wrong and, and true and false and close to Hashem and not. And it is an exercise. For because sure. the body and the soul are forever at odds. And that's being in this world. It's the world of Asiya, the world of doing. Life is an exercise. And you are meant to holach, to journey till the very end of it. And so like, and it's funny because walking is one of the most beneficial exercises. It's not, a, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think it's a, you know what I mean? A, a parallel. So I'm just saying, um, 
for all of us. I think we just we need to appreciate this. And when you're talking about your overall health, your emotional well-being, exercise gives you a lot of, first of all, if you do it with a friend, you know, when you do, and even when you do it just with your personal trainer, what's nice about it is a few things. Like you can do chuva spiritually, your body can do chuva, which is so amazing. So you may be like, been a couch potato for who knows how many years, but guess what? Your body can build itself back and become healthier and stronger and more agile and more flexible and more balanced and a stronger core, just like you can with the chuva process. And what's so nice about it is you can feel the, um, the simcha that Hashem gives you when you reach a goal. And so like, I was just saying to one of my clients and she had a busy mother, like with lots of little kids and, and you know, her, like, if people would look at her, they go, oh, she has to lose weight, you know, like it would be their, you know, comment, but you know what? She wants to feel strong and healthy. So she said to me, I am going to make a commitment to exercising just one hour, one week, that's in a week. That's all I can afford you know, afford in terms of time. I don't have the time. She said, but that one hour I look so forward to, and it just gives me that burst. Like it just will give her energy for the rest of the week. And once you become more conscious of this, you don't feel so bad when people say, go up the stairs and can you get me a drink or go down the stairs that you could pick up socks. I always tell people buy these Fitbits. And then you're like, I'm going to do that mitzvah for sure. I'll get another 10,000. Steps. Okay, and that's why you're like motivated okay. it. <laughs> and spiritually to do the right thing. So I'm just saying, like, there's so much beauty, beauty to this whole reality. Do you know what I mean? And, and there's so many good parallels, and it just brings in a whole different reality. I think like these women, especially when you've been sitting around, you don't really do it. Like, I've got a, I have a lot of girls now that I'm training who are in. I would say like early thirties and some of them, you know, they never exercised. They were very, you know, they, you know, Jim and Beis Yaakov was the last thing they cared about. You know what I mean? So they just never moved and now they're moving and they're telling me like, I just feel so good. You know? And I have many like um, people I exercise with that are pregnant. And so many people like when they're pregnant, then it's just like, you know, they just like, you know, just give it all up. And they're feeling a million times better. It's better for your recovery. It's better for your delivery. It's better for everything. You know, so uh, I hope we answered that question. Okay. Oh, yes, it was wonderful. Thank you. Really answered okay. it fully. And okay. now well, you were mentioning Rambam before. And so Rambam said that it's Hashem's way to have a healthy body since it's most difficult to develop spiritually when one is sick, like we were saying yes. Therefore, one must refrain from activities and foods which harm the body and instead perform activities that strengthen the body. Right. So exercise and a proper diet help preserve the body while idleness and unhealthy diet harm the body. So after hearing that, it is so clear that taking care of our bodies is such a huge mitzvah. And I want to ask you, what types of exercises do you do with women to help them get fit? And what exercises would you recommend for our listeners who really want to get in shape, but they have no idea where to start? Okay, so um, I definitely try to do a combination of aerobics and muscle building. I try to use full body because then you get a, what I call a bigger bang for your buck. So if you're working the lower body and the upper body at the same time, you're, you know, you're you're increasing your heart rate, it's more aerobic. People should know like anytime that they lift their arms above their heart, it's gonna make your heart work a lot more. So, and, and a lot of times when people are exercising, they don't really use their arms. Like even when you're going for a walk, if you would just use your arms like this, you would add 30% more to the, um, to the difficulty of that exercise and add on burning more calories and changing your metabolism and making yourself stronger. So like just using that full body is a great idea. I think for us um, as Jewish women, we are, a lot of us are very petite. A lot of us are brown eyes and brunettes. And we sometimes have, you know, um, uh, what's it called? Like small bones, small frames. So we really should think about osteo. Osteo is a, a very good Jewish woman's issue. And it can even be a Jewish man's issue too. Okay. So as we're getting older, your bones are, are 
bone mass is decreasing and it's getting more brittle. So it is good for you to really walk, do some weight bearing movements, right? Um, today, you can get a lot of different pieces of equipment that are inexpensive. There's something called a bod rope, which is not like a full skipping rope. It's almost just like a tiny rope with two balls at the end. They're not expensive. I think they're like $20 and you can just pretend to skip. Okay. Cause for a lot of us, as we've aged, like, you know, you laugh. I remember I had this client once who was 30 years old. She goes, I was amazing at skipping. And I gave her a real skipping rope. She got out like every five minutes. There's something wrong with your rope. And I'm like, no, there's nothing wrong with your rope. You're just not 10 anymore. <laughs> it's just a different reality. So a bod rope is a good thing. Those trampolines are very good things. You know, the indoor trampolines, because it's weight bearing exercise that doesn't hurt your joints. It's very aerobic. So they tell you like, it's almost 15 minutes of jumping on your trampoline is worth 30 minutes of walking. So, you know, there's like a lot of different ways. Um, personally, why I like the personal trainer, why I like these small groups is because when you have a personal trainer, they're really watching you. And like I've seen, I was in clubs for years, like years. I just liked it. I was always just like I said, I'm, I'm more athletic and I enjoy it. And it really, I have a lot of excess adrenaline. And so this was a good way for me to burn it. So I would always see like people doing squats with their knees going forward and really getting hurt. But if there's 30 people in the class, you, there's just not enough of an eye watching you. So if you do go to classes, stay right in the front, listen very carefully. Do you know what I mean? Like that's another way you can um, put exercise in. And then all that stuff that we always hear that seems so funny, like take the stairs and don't do the elevator a hundred percent. And for people who are extremely busy, they need to appreciate that you can divide up the time. Like some people go, I don't have an hour. I don't have half an hour. Okay. But you have 10 minutes, three times a day. You do. And even like, if you really can't go anywhere, try running up your stairs, try walking up your stairs. <laughs> that is like incredibly aerobic and incredibly, there's a lot of weight bearing. Any like exercise that you don't even use a weight, but you use your own body weight. Like you can do push ups up against the wall. Do you know what I mean? Like there's so many, I mean, it's endless. Like to be honest, it is, it's a world like, Hashem created the world so vast and so big. That's to me is one of the greatest pieces of evidence that there has to be a God. Do you know what I mean? Like every part of our lives is its own magazine, is its own book, is its own. Do you know what I mean? So much intricacy. It's impossible. And it's all um, in perfect harmony. Do you know what I mean? So you know that there has to be a creator that's put it all together. This could never randomly happen, right? So when it comes to the exercise, that's what I would tell you, build it into your day. If you can afford a membership, if you can afford a personal trainer, go for it. Like it really is something beautiful. Even if it's just like what my client said, I don't care. I'm doing this one hour, once a week, it's a start. Do you know what I mean? And then you can, you know, fill it in you know, all on your own, with your own walk, with your own, you know, some people start to jog. Swimming is all good. Swimming is, I would say, more in, unless you really are a swimmer, like I, I most people when they go swimming, I kind of feel like they, there's lots of schmooze, you know what I mean? And I don't know about how much lose. If you're really going to work, yes, you're going to get a good workout. But if you're going to kind of schmoozy woozy, then it's very good, like for the stretching and being limber and being more flexible. And, and you know, and you will still get something because the water has its own resistance and people can do aqua fitness and you can work hard in aqua fitness. But you have to, one thing you do have to do with exercise is the same thing you have to do with your mitzvahs, with your tefillah, with your Torah, with your chesed, with everything you do. With your parenting, with your marriage, mindfulness. So right. hard. You have to really be in the moment. You have to. And if you want to be in the moment, I'm going to tell you that you don't even need weights. You could, with your mind, visualize that you are holding like a 10 pound weight and slowly contract and expand and you will work your muscle incredibly. This is with nothing. And if I would give you a heavy weight and you're just going like this and flailing and flipping it around, you're not getting anything. You're using a lot of momentum. So I think everything, 
there's a harmony in everything that Hashem said. You know, I want to see you grow. I want to see you spiritually grow, emotionally grow, physically grow. I want your agility, your core. I want all these wonderful things for you. But you're going to have to make a real free will choice, a real mindful choice. And it's hard. Today, it's hard. Uh, it's just hard. I wish I could say that we were more focused. I know myself, like I'm like, ah, you know, <laughs> like many times, right? But is this something that you would do? It's shmartem me'od esnaf sheichem. There's not a lot of mitzvahs that Hashem gives you the word me'od. doesn't say keep Shabbos me'od. Okay, it says take care of your health me'od very much. Why? Because it's not something you're instinctively going to want to do. 110%. 110%. You have to 100% fight. And today yeah. you have to fight 10 times more. Sorry. Okay. So 10 times more than you ever had to fight, right? The food temptation, everything is available. And exercise, you don't even turn the key of your car anymore. Like, it's right. You wild. press the button. Yep. Yep. It's beyond. I like. Just, I never was able to lease a car. Finally, I leased a, a little car, and I love my car. But I couldn't believe it. Like I was saying, like, what next, Hashem? Like nothing. We're not going to have to do anything. <laughs> We're gonna, you aren't. Soon you're going to sit in the car. It's going to drive for you. You know what right. I mean? You're gonna, exactly. You'll sit there and you'll be on the phone and eat. Okay. <laughs> so this is what I'm right. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. So you you are going to have to make a mindful choice. But I'm going to tell you from where I'm sitting and from the people that I work with that it has been better than anything. And you know how you wish each other, we all want to live to be 120. You do, but you want to live with good health. And can I tell you, I guarantee you good health. I can't. Only Hashem can guarantee you good health, but I can guarantee that you will be Yotze that mitzvah of Shmartem Ma'odis Nafshechem by taking care of yourself, right? And I can guarantee you could look at Hashem and say, you know, I tried. I really did reasonable Hishtadlis. I don't want you to go like become an Olympic athlete right now, but reasonable Hishtadlis, right? And I'm just going to end with this. You know, we're all like very, um, you, you know, aging is scary today. It's not yeah. what it was. It's a very scary feeling. And people feel like they're moving into the wall. Like no yeah. one is noticing them. What you say doesn't matter. We worship youth. We worship this. We worship that. Put it all to the side. I just want to tell you that if you exercise, there is a difference between what we call your chronological age and your body age. So I could chronologically be whatever in my 60s but my body age and my health and my stamina and my strength and my this could be much much younger so why do i care about that because i want to be young forever i'm never going to be young forever but what do i care about that because as i'm aging Baruch Hashem, i will be able to still be strong and able to lift up my einikloch and get out of a chair by myself and push the the what's it called cart you know the shopping cart in mirz Hashem, I'm, I'm davening for it for me and for everyone and who's watching and everywhere in the world do you know what i'm saying Right. So that's why I care about the way my body's aging. And for those people who are 30 or sitting on a couch all day long, their body age may be 50. And when they get up, oh my gosh, this hurts. And oh, I can't get up the stairs. And I don't know, why am I so like, you know, creaky? Because you're not moving. Right, right. right? And the same will parallel with your mind. If you're busy and you're using your mind and your mind will be young and healthy and fresh. If you're using your neshama, you're growing and you keep learning more and more and more, then you will have the vitality of life. If you decide to stand still, then it will all stand still. Right? No, it's 100%. 100%. That's the way I look at it. And um, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I want to ask you one last question. Okay. <laughs> one more last one. And then um, how has combining Torah with exercise played, like really, really played a, a specific and important role in your life personally? What effect has it had on your own personal health and well-being? Okay. So for my own personal health and well-being, um, it's all the things that I said to you right now about the chronological age. So like... Uh, <laughs> So my daughter was moving. Okay. So she was doing renovations and she like rented a house and she had to move from house to house to house. So I was cracking up because she calls me up because, you know, like my husband, he needs help schlepping the furniture. So can you come? <laughs> okay, so I'm there and I'm like 30 years or 20 years older than my son-in-law. And so they're like, come on, help us move the couch. Help us. And I'm like, I think I went wrong somewhere. Okay. But on the other 
other hand, I was like so besimcha that I was able to do it. You know, and if I go on a hike with my, you know, Aina club or my whatever, like, I feel like I'm there. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes, you know, there's this little part of me that goes, shucks, I wish I could be stronger and faster, but at least I can do what I can do. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. it's helped kept me with like just an overall Bar Hashem vitality. So like, yeah. I feel like you can cross these borders of age. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, you know, people say to me, oh, you don't seem like that. Like, that's how old you were. I would never believe you. you know what I mean? So I'm just saying, so that has helped me a lot. And just, you know, the ability to connect with people this way, like I said at the beginning and help people and just develop these beautiful relationships with people to give to people in a very caring way has helped me a lot, like to just, and also this idea of like dealing with people who are um, every spectrum of life, you know, it's, it's opens me up, you know, I, I don't think I was, thank Hashem, thank you Hashem. I don't think I'm a judgmental person to begin with, but it definitely, you know, it, it, forces you to really be in there and love people and accept them. You know what I mean? So that's what it's done for me in this way. And again, like you do have to appreciate that when you feel healthy and strong, you're emotionally a little more confident and you can handle things a little better. If you are like, you know, always like, and things come your way, you don't necessarily, again, it's that stamina. Right. We need that. I don't like to me, I feel like we all need so much stamina to live sure. today. Like we're in a very different world, a very confusing world. It's it's not so well out there. Do you know what I mean? On all levels. So you're gonna need the stamina to be able to get through it. So this helps build it, right? So that's what I, I feel like I'm I, again, I can only say thank you, thank you, Hashem. That's all I can say. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Thank you. And thank you so much, Rebbits and Gail, for joining us on America's Top Rebbits. We really, really had so much fun and we enjoyed having you here. And may this class be for the Rafua Shalema, for Eliezer Raphael Le Ben and also for Arya David Ben Shira. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Amen to all those Rafuas and Yeshuas and Elias and the Shamas. Okay, so all the best. And uh, I guess we'll talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs>